How's it going gamers? My name is Rushcode. Thank you for helping us to hit 150 subscribers. Woohoo! So in today's video I want to do something special again. It seems to be a running theme now to make tutorials, so I'm going to be doing a tutorial on how to attach a widget to the mouse cursor. And I would like to thank one of my subscribers, NV, for making this suggestion. Here's a quick demonstration of what we'll be achieving today. You have your mouse cursor and there's this white box with a green button on it. What we'll be doing is learning how to make it such that when you press E, the box will follow the mouse wherever it goes, right? It's attached to it in the top left corner. And then we'll also learn about another option where if I click on the button, we can make the white box follow the cursor from the center. If this is what you're after, then keep watching. Here's a breakdown of what we will cover in this video and the corresponding timestamps. So if you want to skip ahead to any of those sections, feel free to do so now. Otherwise, we have a lot to get through, so let's get started. Number one, initial setup. Go to your project settings under edit, project settings. Go to input, which is under engine, and then create this action mapping under action mappings by hitting the plus sign. And I'm calling it attach white box. From there, create a key that attaches to it. I've used E, then go back to your level, open the content browser, and create a blueprint for your player controller. I've already created one down here, which is my controller, and create a widget while you're at it using user interface widget blueprint. So once those two are created, jump into my controller, and from the event begin play node, you'll want to do two things, which is creating two of these variables right at the start, but you can create them along the way as you're setting these up. So for the first one, you can pull out get player controller, and then from there, pull out a noodle and you can see the promoter variable. As soon as you click that, it'll create this node and you can rename it like I did, player ref. And this will save the reference for your player controller. So you do need to call this node all the time. You can just call player ref and use it like this. Once you've set that up, create a widget using create widget. So this node right here, this is what it'll look like when you first make it. And then select your class and it will update the name as create white box widget. And then do the same thing as you did with your player controller. You pull out a noodle from here and promote a variable. This will create the next node, which can be used to save your white box reference. Now you can call your widget anytime you want in your controller blueprint. From there, add it to the viewport. Next, go to your widget, which should open up in the designer tab. If not, click on it and create these three elements here. So you want to make a canvas panel first, which is under the panel dropdown, and then grab a border and a button from the common elements here, drag them into the canvas panel and make sure that these two elements are anchored to the center by clicking on anchors, going to this middle box here and holding shift and control and then clicking it. This will ensure that these boxes are anchored to the center and it makes it easier to reference it when you want to position it according to where the mouse is. And then you're ready to go. Number two, input modes. There are three input modes that you can set in your game, and I'm doing them inside the controller blueprint. By default, when you run your game and click inside it, it would activate the game mode only, which means your mouse cursor will disappear, but it allows you to handle keyboard input through the controller. So when we play this, you can see that I've immediately taken control of the controller and I'm able to move around and jump, but there isn't any mouse. So you could show the mouse by activating this node here from the player reference, but as I said, it's not a good idea it's just weird, bro, because when you play this, you're going to have your mouse moving in some funny directions along with your player moving around. It's, it's just a bit disconnected the way it works. So we don't want this mode. So I'm going to disconnect these two, but that's your default, right? So we want to change that to either this top mode over here or this bottom mode over here. With the top mode, it's going to allow game and UI access, which means all input is enabled and you can see everything, including your mouse and it handles your keyboard input through the controller. If you're new to widgets and using the UI interface, it's probably a good idea to start with this, but it can get a bit tricky to work with because there's a lot of things happening at the same time. What you want to do is make sure that your cursor will be hidden during capture, so take this on, and make sure it's connected to showing your mouse cursor on as well. So when you run it, you can see that your mouse is in view, and I can move the controller, but I cannot turn my character unless I right-click and turn the screen, but you can see my mouse has disappeared. As soon as I release the button, the mouse reappears again. This is because of the show mouse cursor node. So these two bits 
work together really well. This will hide the cursor when you're moving your character or turning it. This will make the cursor reappear after you've released the mouse button. But if you want your mouse cursor hidden most of the time and only to appear when you are activating a widget, then perhaps your best option would be to use UI only. The downside to this is that it will not allow any keyboard input. It completely disables it, which means anything that your controller might be able to receive, for example, like this input from your project settings, attach white box, when you press E, this won't activate if you have UI only engaged. And the only way to fix that is to override the input through the widget. Number three, widget focus. You'll notice that there's this element here in widget to focus, which is also present in game and UI mode. All it does is allows the widget to take focus as soon as you set up the input mode. And you can do that in three different ways. One is either by connecting your widget reference to it so that it knows that's the one to focus on straight away. Or if you go to your widget under your graph settings, in the event graph, you can see there's this event construct node provided to you. Connecting this up to set focus will do the same thing as in widget to focus, which immediately focuses your widget when it's activated or when it's created. And the third way to give your widget focus is to simply click on it. But the issue with this though is how the input modes affect that focus. For example, if I connected up this node to game and UI and ran the simulation, if I click on the outside here, this is a this is the controller or the game space, right? The widget is the widget space. So clicking out here and then pressing E, you will notice that the word controllers appear. What this means is that my controller is receiving input. If I click on the button and press E, you can see now the word widget appears. I've set it up so that the word widget appears when my widget is activating the keyboard input. So it's an override. The weird part is when I click on the white bit and press E, my controller activates. So what this is saying is that even though I'm clicking on the widget section, the controller is taking priority. And I believe this is because game and UI mode prioritizes game mode such that if this is not an interactable widget section, then the controller will assume priority for keyboard input. However, if I disconnect this and connect it up to input mode UI only, the effect is a little different. If I click out here in this space and press E, nothing happens because UI only does not allow controller input. If I click on the green button, I expect the word widget to appear, as you can see here. And if I click on the white bit, we get the widget again. This is the expected outcome because this is still a widget area. And as soon as I click back out here again, I get nothing when I press E because controller input is disabled when I'm using the UI only mode. But another little difference to take note of is I'm currently having this node connected to enable keyboard input, but it still kind of works even without, right? This is supposed to help with overriding the keyboard input to allow the widget to take things. But if I, pl if I compile this and play it, clicking outside and pressing E, nothing happens as expected. Clicking the green button, pressing E, we get the widget to appear. So a widget is in control. But if I click the white space, nothing happens now. Nothing appears up here even when I press E. So in order to make every part of the widget recognizable for widget focus, we need this node to be connected up. As it says in the description, setting this flag to true allows this widget to accept focus when clicked, which includes the non-interactable white space around the green button. And I won't connect this node up simply because I can do it right here by connecting this node up. It does the same thing. Now that we understand some of the differences between these modes, you can choose which one's best suited for you and we can do the thing. Number four, keyboard input. Starting off with a really easy one, if you're not fussed about the mouse being shown all the time, then connect it up to game and UI. And then in the controller blueprint down here, you can introduce this event, which is simply from your project settings input attach white box, connect it up to whatever nodes you want to create your actions. In my case, I'm disconnected to print string first, just so I know it's working. So when we hit play and click anywhere in the controller area and press E, the controller will activate. This is still true when we click the white area, the border of the widget, because that's not interactable. So controller still activates. Since I know this works, all I need to do is connect this up to something like update to mouse position, which involves setting the position in the viewport for the widget based on where the current mouse position is. When you run this and click anywhere and press E, it will update the widget according to where the mouse is. But it's only snapping it to the top left corner because the top left corner is the default point of origin for your widget. If you wanted to go a step further, you could connect this to a flip-flop 
which toggles between A and B, and every time it's A, using a branch that will activate the true statement, which you can connect to an event tick, allowing your position to update every frame and follow the mouse as it moves along the screen. So there's nothing different here, it's just that we've connected it all to an event tick, and your controller input is simply toggling whether this follows it or not. So when you run it and press E, your widget will begin to follow your mouse for every frame. And when you press E again, the widget stops following it because we've flip-flopped or toggled it to state B. And that's pretty much the whole tutorial if you want to use input mode game and UI. If you prefer to use UI only, then there's quite a bit more here to talk about. Using this mode means you cannot activate this node anymore, right? Because your controller is never going to receive this. So you have to go to your widget and make sure this is connected here and then create a function override for on key down. Now on key down is not in this list anymore because I've already selected it and activated it. So if you open it, you will get two nodes, on key down and return node. I've put in all these other nodes. So the first one you want to do is make sure you get your key from whatever you pressed, see if it matches E. And if it does, then out comes a, well, I've created a sequence node just to organize it a bit better. But we print a string to let us know that this control has come from the widget, not the actual controller, and then hook that up to something like update to mouse position. This is simply an event in my widget, which does the same thing as the controller to update the position of the widget only once. You run this and press the button area. We have the widget activated and it follows mouse. If I click anywhere else, I don't think anything's going to happen. Yeah. If I click the white space, then it will follow again. This is because we're in UI only mode. So again, controller space doesn't work anymore but anywhere inside the widget will work, follow the mouse. If you want it to follow indefinitely, then we can do something similar here where we have a flip-flop and a, just a different event to do to control this, which then goes into a branch under the widgets event tick and sets the position according to where the mouse position is. So connecting this up to follow mouse and running it, pressing E will get the widget to follow the mouse. Now, if you prefer your controller to decide what to do when you press E, but you still want UI mode only, then the third option would be to use your widget to override and absorb the keyboard input, but then immediately pass it back to your controller using this other node I've created in the widget, which is send to controller. And all it does is it casts to your player controller. And then from there, it runs a particular event. So this event is in the actual controller graph as a custom event, which you can then connect to your flip-flop and causes the widget to follow your mouse, not because of a blueprint inside your widget, but because it was passed back to your controller. Keeping in mind that this doesn't work if you click in the controller space because it's UI only, so you still need to click inside the widget to activate it. If you don't like where your widget is attaching to your mouse, then we need to talk about the next section. Number five, attachment positioning. Whether you're updating the mouse position or updating it for every frame or every tick, the nodes are the same. The viewport position copies the mouse position. But in order to make this box offset from the mouse so that the mouse cursor is in the middle or in the bottom right corner, you have to do a little bit of maths. So in the widget, I have a similar set of blueprints, but I've added this extra one just for convenience. Originally, the viewport position will copy whatever the mouse position is combined as a 2D vector. But if you wanted it to be in the bottom right corner, you would need to connect this node to a subtraction and take it away from where the mouse position is. So what it does is it takes these elements and moves them further back while the mouse is wherever it's supposed to be. And then you end up with a bottom right position. But it's very tricky to get this to work because the widget is 300 by 300 in size, but my viewport is not the correct scale for that. So I have to correct the scale based on what my actual current screen resolution is and proportionate the original 300 size to this other strange size, prioritizing the 278 because the smaller number is generally how resolutions will scale and then fix that onto the new widget size, which then gets subtracted. If I run the simulation, this box over here is not actually 300. It's 278 by 278 because of the viewport that I'm using. It's not full screen. And then make sure this node is connected to the end here and make sure that follow mouse is engaged. Yep. So that'll do the widget. Now when I press E, you can see that the bottom right corner of the widget is attached to the mouse. So it's an offset by subtraction. If you wanted to go further and get the mouse to be at the center of the widget, then 
The only adjustment you need to make is connecting your 278 to a division where it divides or halves it and then minus that as the offset. So when you run this and press E, your widget is now concentric with the mouse. Number six, UI versus game plus UI. We've already seen some of the limitations and the benefits for using the UI only mode, but one of the nice things of using the game and UI mode is that you can create slightly different effects for the controller input and the widget input because they both can be activated using this mode. So for example, in my widget, I have this string widget and it follows the mouse, which has its own unique way of attaching the cursor currently to the center of the widget. At the same time, my controller would print a string for controller and then flip flop to set the mouse to the top left corner of the widget. So when I run this, you will see the demo that I showed you at the start of this video, clicking outside the widget or clicking in the white space and pressing E will attach my mouse to the top left corner. So you can see that the word controller comes out every time I do this. But if I press the inside bit of the widget and press E, now the widget gets activated. So that could be a different type of effect if you're after something that interacts differently depending on where you click your mouse. Sometimes it can be controller input, sometimes it can be mouse widget input. And it can be a little wacky to try and work with this sort of thing because you can move it around while moving your character. If you guys have any questions, let me know down in the comments below. Otherwise, I hope you found this useful and fun to learn. So, thanks for watching, guys. And if you liked it, smash the like button, hit subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next video. Rush Code out!